Hey everybody, Mr. Kaczynski here, starting up section Q of IXL's 8th grade math. Section P was dealing with transformations and congruence, and today we're switching over to transformations and similarity. Um, so we're going to start off with some congruent figures and then go from there. So actually the last skill in section P of IXL uh, dealt with congruent triangles, so we should kind of have an idea of those already but they basically state that um, congruent shapes have the same all their pairs of corresponding sides are congruent and all their pairs of corresponding angles are congruent um, so we got the side of 51 and here's a side of 51 we have a side of 35 and here's another side of 35 um, we have a side of 45 and another side of 45. And actually by the rule side, side, side of triangle congruence, um, we could say that they're congruent right now. But we'll go ahead and keep going. Uh, we have an angle of 59. Here's another angle of 59. An angle of 42 that's congruent to this angle of 42. And how about, uh, I need another color. I'm out of colors. How about this angle of 79? and this angle of 79. So all the pairs of corresponding sides and uh, corresponding angles are congruent. So definitely yes, these are congruent. All right, so it doesn't always have to be triangles though. Are these congruent to each other? Well, um, I see a couple of angles of 109. Okay, so that's a good start. I see a couple of angles of 71. That does not guarantee congruency, though. That does guarantee um, similarity, but it doesn't guarantee congruency. And the other thing to notice is that this is a rhombus. All four sides are 20. This has the same lengths of 20 for every side. So yes, these are definitely congruent. Yes, they are congruent. All right, one more pair of possibly congruent shapes. Are these congruent? Well, we've got the 60 and the 60. So maybe, you know, this is a rhombus or maybe it's not. And this is 60 and this is 60. Uh, we've got the 52 and the 70, but we're not given those sides over here. So maybe they're equivalent, maybe they're not. Um, I see an angle of 139. There's another one of 139. And I see an angle of... 41 and another angle of 41 and that's where the similarities kind of run out here on us because then I've got another 41 and I'll do that in green just like the other ones but then this one is 49 so boom at that point we can say no these are not congruent all right so that's congruent they have to have all their corresponding sides and angles all those pairs need to be congruent Similar is another story, okay? Are these shapes similar? All right, well, I do see um, angle D is congruent to angle P. I see that angle B is congruent to angle Q. And I see that angle C is congruent to angle R. These actually are similar to each other. Angle, angle, angle. Does prove it doesn't prove congruence, but it does prove similarity. So uh, this one over here on the right is just an enlarged version of this one over here on the left. We'll get more into dilations um, a little bit later. I don't want to get too bogged down in that. And the other thing to look at is this ratio. If we look at um, side lengths, so let's look at the shortest sides. 15 compared to I'll use different color. 15 compared to 25. 15 over 25. simplifies to or is about not not about it's exactly 0.6 and then if I look at um, let's get some different colors here orange if I look at the second biggest sides 27 over 4 and 45 that ratio is also going to be the same that's also and I'm doing it on my calculator right now 27 divided by 45 is 0.6 all right, and what the heck, let's do one more. Um, what color should I use? I'll try this yellow. I don't think it shows up for you guys very well, but we'll try it. All right, 30 over 50, that is also 0.6. So 
So are these similar? We proved without a doubt that yes, they are similar, okay? It's mainly about ratios of sides and congruent angles. All right, well, these have all congruent angles uh, and that works to prove congruency between triangles but not other shapes. So then we have to look at the sides and those ratios, okay? So here's a one-to-one -one ratio, all right? But then on these sides, 29 to 21, that's definitely not a one-to-one -one ratio, okay? So uh, no, these are not similar. They're not similar. They have, to have the same ratio of their sides. Let's look at a couple more. All right, so angles-wise, okay, I got E and C that are congruent to L and J, and I've got B and D uh, congruent to M and K. So we definitely got a couple parallelograms here. But now we have to check the ratio of their sides. So let's check the shortest side to the shortest side. 30 over 24. I believe that's 1.25. I'm checking right now on my calculator. Yep, 1.25. And then let's check uh, this other side here. Let's check 45 to 36. And if that's 1.25, then we do have similar triangles. Yep, that's 1.25 as well. So I'm going to say, yes, these are similar, not triangles, but um, parallelograms. One's a shrunk version of the other. The one on the right is shrunk version of the one on the left by a scale factor of, well, this one's been enlarged by a scale factor of 1.25. We'll get to that later too. All right, and are these similar? Are these similar? Well, I don't need to check too much because um, I don't have any angles over here that are congruent to just even those two base angles right there. So uh, since those base angles are different, I can say without a doubt, uh, no, they are not similar. So there's an introduction to similarity, transformations and similarity, section Q of IXL's eighth grade math. Good luck to you and let me know how it goes.